So today we're going to make big butterflies. Um, and they'll each have a different butterfly to draw from. I just did the classic monarch. And um, we're going to be starting out with black ink. So it's kind of like paint, but it's a lot thinner. Um, so that you can really get a smooth line with it. It's not um, chunky. So um, we're gonna be using a paint brush to draw with the ink. Now, um, when you use a paint brush, you get a thick line. Last time we used a ballpoint pen to get a really thin line and we made a really tiny bug. We're making a big bug this time. So we wanna, we can use a thick, thick line with it. Um, it's important when you're drawing with ink that you keep your bristles nice and straight, not squished out like that, um, because every little line shows. So we want to keep our brush having a good hair day. We don't want it squished down. So when you're painting, think about your brush as a ballerina who dances on her toes. We don't want her scooting around on her booty like that, because then our brush gets all messed up and the lines just everywhere that we don't want them. So if you want your paintbrush to do what it's supposed to do, what you want it to do, um, if you want to be the boss of this paintbrush, you have to keep the bristles up. So let me show you how I drew the black lines of my butterfly. Okay, so first I'm gonna draw the body of the butterfly. So I'm gonna make a head, thorax, and abdomen. So, I'm drawing from observation. I'm drawing what I see. Um, so I'm using my lines and my paintbrush to describe what I see as best as I can. I'm not trying to replicate what I see or copy it. I'm trying to describe it using my drawing. Okay, so I, I drew one line on of the top of the wing on one side and then I copied it over on the other side right away because that helps me get it to kind of match up better because my hand kind of remembers what it just did the instant before. And it's good to look, where does the wing meet up on the body? And I'll make my line start there. Or where does it meet up with the top wing? Okay, now I get to make patterns, which is my favorite part. Uh-oh, wait, I'm forgetting to copy it over to the other side. I got too excited. And I did all the one side at once. See what happens. Oh yeah, I had a little trouble making it match up perfectly, but you know what? That's okay because we have photographs if we want things to look exactly like the real life, right? We have computers for things like that. This is a drawing. We want it to look like a drawing, and drawings aren't perfect. Drawings look like a hand made them. Okay, this time I remembered. Do it on one side, then go straight to the other side.
Okay, well that's all done. I'm sure it looks awesome. Um, we have to let our ink dry before we start coloring it in because it's gonna turn into a big mess if the ink's still wet. So it doesn't take that long. Let's just watch this short cartoon while we wait without touching our picture, just leaving them alone and letting them dry while we watch some TV. And when that's over, we can start coloring it in. cartoon and um now we're gonna use these paint sticks they look like glue sticks but they're not glue they're for drawing with and it's kind of like a crayon but it looks like paint and I'm gonna show you how you can blend them together a little bit and just have fun with these they're really cool and fun to draw with so let's look at how I colored in my butterfly okay when I'm looking at my butterfly I noticed that it's not just flat orange. It's kind of like shimmery. I see light yellow in there. I see light orange. I see dark orange. So I'm going to try to do that because I have three different color paint sticks here. So they just work like a crayon. I just color it on. I'm going to start with the lightest color and then I'll go to the next lightest orange. And I can just color it right on top of that yellow to get a kind of yellowy orange that fades into a another color. So I'm just going to color my orange on top of my yellow so that they kind of mix together. They fade from one to the other a little bit. So I didn't cover the whole area in yellow. I just put it in parts, like maybe at the top, wherever you see it. So now I see kind of a darker orange at the bottom, so I'm adding it to the bottom. And I kind of want to blend it in, so I'm going to put my light orange on top of it. So see how it blends in a little bit. And the same treatment on the top wings, which to me look like they have a little bit more of that dark reddish orange. So I'm gonna put it just where I see it, wherever I see it look darker, I'll put that there. I'll start with that. And now I can get my other, my yellow, and put that wherever I see 
like a really light orange or a yellowy color. Maybe I'll call it dark yellow. And then my medium color, I'm kind of color on top of those other colors to blend them all together. Now my butterfly looks a little bit more shimmery than if I would have just colored it in flat orange. If you look closely at a butterfly's wing, you'll see thousands of tiny different scales. Each one is a slightly different color. And that's part of why butterflies' wings look kind of varied and not just one flat color. And they kind of look shimmery. And um, we'll try to mix colors up to get that effect. What can I do to make you happy? What kind of clown thing can I do? Wiggle my ears and make them flappy My humor is sappy, won't you sit on my lappy and don't Cry, baby, boo, boo. Yeah. 
are free. Peace, they are free. Show little children sights they can't see. see. Cause the music is starting in a minute, you know. Your horse is starting up and down. Up and down, round you go. La 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 la